Welcome to October's Leco Challenge. Yesterday's problem is best time to buy and sell stock for. You can see I missed it here, but hey, things happen, whatever. You are given an integer array of prices where prices i is the price of a given stock on the i-th day. Design an algorithm to find the maximum profit. You may complete at most k transactions. So we've gone through this problem before with best time to buy and sell stock three, but let's go through it one more time because it is a difficult concept to kind of get a handle on. So. Let's just think about if we had an example of the numbers, what do you say, three, two, six, seven, and let's go four, seven. Now, if we were to do this in one transaction, right, it's pretty simple. We just get the minimum price and sell it at the maximum price that comes afterwards. But let's try conceptualizing this in terms of the position that we would be in when we buy and sell a stock. And that's what we're going to keep track of here. We'll have variable called position that keeps track of how much profit we've made so far in a certain state as well as the profit uh, this will be storing our global profit while we store our uh, local profit going through our array so with the first position what we do is take the price of the stock um, and assume that if we were to buy um, the stock there that would be our position so there at position one our position would be negative three, right? Because if we decided to buy this stock, we would have, we're technically at a net profit of zero, negative three. So what we do is have a DP array here, and this keeps track of our, what do you want to say, local profit, I suppose. <clears throat> and what we kind of do is go through and try to calculate the best position that we could be in. Uh, when we After we calculate the best position we can be in, then we calculate the amount of profit that we could have made so far. So here we start with the in, um, index one with two. What we decide here is, okay, is it better to have not bought this stock before and be in position negative three? Or could we basically subtract this local profit, subtract by the price, current price, which would be two. So that would put us in a position of negative two, right? So which, which one's better? And we can see that we want to be at the one where the price is the lowest. So we want it to be at the maximum position that we can be in. So we would pick negative two. So that's gonna be our new position that we take. It's gonna be negative two. And what's the amount of profit that we could have made? Well, with position negative two, what we do is say, all right, the profit that we can make for so far is zero. And if we just sold our stock immediately, it would be plus the price there. So that would be zero, right? So it doesn't matter. That, that would just be zero right there. Now let's move on to the next one with six. Uh, we first calculate our position. Is it better to be negative two or negative, well, zero minus six, so it's negative six. Better to be negative two. And what's the amount of profit we can make? Well, negative two plus the price here is four or zero. So which one? Well, obviously four, right? So that's gonna be our profit. And what we do there is update our DPRA to four. And we just move on there with seven. Our position, best position is still negative two. So this would be five. Um, here it's going to be best position is negative two, so it's going to be two, but we want to keep the maximum one. Sorry, this should be updated to five here. So we'll just keep five. And same thing here, the value is going to be five, so this would be five. And we can see with one transaction here, k pulling one, our max profit is going to be five, right? So what we do is when we take our k equals two here, uh, we basically do the same thing, but we restart everything with our positions being, what, negative three and profit of zero. But now we're gonna take the um, amount of profit we could have made with one tra transaction and calculate what's our best position gonna be after that. So like we're here, it's still the same, it's negative two, um, right? And profit, once we get here, it's gonna be four. But l l let's, let's, um, Think about our best position when we move to uh, all the way to here. So everything's gonna be the same on our next run. But once we get here, this is gonna be our answer, right? Basically what we see here is if we subtract the profit that we could have made and if we bought the stock here, our max position suddenly is gonna be one, right? Before it was always negative two, negative two. What about here? One. So this is actually the best position. And that makes sense because 
We just bought the stock here at two, sold it at seven. So we made a profit of five. Now we decide, okay, we're gonna buy it at four. So we have a profit of one here uh, because we just bought the stock. So it's gonna be minus four. So we wanna take that profit, store that and see, okay, if we sold immediately here, we get a price of four, then our profit's gonna be five. Well, our profit's already five, so that doesn't make sense. We just keep five. But then we move to seven and we say, all right, if we sell at seven, well, first we calculate our best position. Here it's negative two, so we don't want that. We want to keep one. And profit, one, position of one plus seven is going to equal eight, right? So that's going to be the best one. And that would be it. We want to return a profit of eight here because you can see we want to buy here, sell at seven, make a profit of five, then buy here, sell it here, make a profit of three equaling eight. All right, so let's code that out and see how it kind of turns out here. Okay, so first things first, if not prices, return zero. Uh, now we want to initialize a DP array. That's just gonna be zero times n. And we're gonna do this in a nested for loop for Let's call it T in range of K. And first we'll initialize our position, which is gonna be the negative prices of zero and our profit, which is always gonna start with zero here. Now we wanna move through um, our list of prices, length of one, and we can start with one to N. Okay, so what do we want to first calculate? Our best position, right? So we want to get the best of position and let's say DPI <clears throat> minus and whoop. sorry, I'm messing up here. Range of one through N DPI minus what? The current price, price is I, right? So that's gonna be our best position. Then we wanna calculate our max profit, which is gonna be the max of profit and position plus the price is I. And finally, make sure to update our DP array with the current profit that we could have made. Finally, once we're finished with that, we just return DP minus one. Oop, got initialize our N. And it looks like it's working. Now I would submit this, and this is an N times K time complexity, but this is actually gonna error out from a time limit exception. There is some edge case where the K is very, very big. It's like 1 million or something like that. So how can we take care of that? I mean, this really threw me for a loop, but and I don't suggest doing this, but just to get this to be accepted, uh, let's just take care of the edge case. We'll say, look, if K is greater than our N, um, then we're gonna do something different. What we're gonna do is calculate the differences between uh, each, yeah, just the differences between each like consecutive index and just get the sum of everything that's positive. Cause that's gonna be, cause we can do as many transactions, transactions as we want. We just wanna take however much um, differences there are in consecutive order, which ones are gonna be positive. Okay, so um, what I'll do is we'll make a new in list and I'll say, all right, B, <clears throat> what should we do here? Four, I in range of, let's see, one through N, uh, we will get the differences between prices I minus prices I minus one. This will give us all the differences, right? And then we'll just say, okay, um, for all these prices, for, I don't know, B in B, if the B is greater than zero, then I'll put that. And we'll just return some of that. Okay, 
So let's see if this works. And accepted. So this took care of that edge case here, but again, I don't suggest this. Um, I don't know why this solution doesn't work when the K is really big. I guess that's just a thing. Um, but I, if like this list of prices was really long and the K was also really long, but this condition didn't hold, I'm not sure how this would hold up. But we're just gonna go with that uh, because every other solution I've seen was like a little too com complicated for me to like have time to explain. So that's it. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.